Terry, it's a good weekend. Was it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay. How are you, uh, how are you doing after the shark loss? Fine. It's only football. Who cares? Yeah, everything's great. Who cares? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by good friends at Top Sport. It's a like and subscribe where you can. Dan, it was a fun weekend of footy. All the home teams won. Yeah, we got to see some absolute flogging, some big bounce upsets. Backs. Yeah, huge returns too. Some coaches under pressure, oh. some injuries. We will get to all. We'll cover it all we'll cover in it the all. next however many minutes. Well, let's start off covering a positive story: the West Tigers. Uh, now you and I have been on here. We are perennial baggers of the Tigers. Where do we stand on everything that happens in the media? But look, I, I genuinely couldn't have been happy for them. La oh, on Saturday night, except for the fact it was against the Sharks. It was the only negative. But that, that performance was, you know, exactly what Benji Marshall wanted. A bounce back performance, silence the critics, huge crowd at Leichhardt. Like, it honestly felt like we were playing against 14. Yeah, it did. Because that time. crowd was just absolutely insane. There were 15,000 people there. I reckon 13,000 were Tigers fans. At least. I switched between Fox Sports and ABC Grandstand and... You, or on both both sets of coverage, you could just hear the fans. Tigers, Tigers. Yeah. Look, as you said, the Sharks losing obviously didn't work well for us. Yeah, it doesn't. It was a feel-good moment, and I hate to use this cliche, but it's good for rugby league. I think, personally, there would only be maybe three teams that would have gone to like our Oval on Saturday night and maybe got a result. Everyone else who was turned up there was getting absolute hiding. The mood, the players, everyone was just bang up for it. Sharks walked into an ambush. Ambush. I'm glad you yeah. mentioned that word. It was an absolute ambush. Cronulla obviously didn't go with them. We'll talk about that more yeah. later. Focusing on the Tigers. Good on them. Yeah. I like the look of this Lachlan Galvin kid. Yeah, look. Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of creativity with him, and I think he's going to find himself in the back row. Yeah, me too. But right now, he's exactly the player. Yeah. And in the Jets game, the Magpies, who were notoriously not good at football, have young Latu, who they yeah. brought across from Manly, to be their long-term halfback. He tore the Jets apart for the first half, then didn't play the second half. Mm -hmm. They've got a good future there. Yeah. I'm happy to see it because although we do bag, we do it from a place of... I do it from a place of love before I get corrected. Yeah. Last week, I stood by them and said, don't write crap articles about them. Give them time to build. Turns out they only need seven days. Yeah, look, I... Uh, again, from, from Galvin, I, I don't think that he's going to be like the 5'8 that's going to go out there and get you 15 try assists, right? And he's going to be like Wade Graham. Yeah. Going to either end up on an edge, I hope not. I hope he ends up as a ball playing lock forward. Like he, 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 he could be a good Glenn Stewart, right? Yeah, it's going to be good fun. Um, the thing is, with a player like him now, it's more important to lock him down than it is for, you know, say them to go and extend David Clemmer. They've got to get this kid. Oh, these, big time. These are the kids of the future for he, them. He and Buller. Uh, yeah. Him, Buller... I like that new centre. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to try and butcher his no, name. No, no, well, out of respect. But he was he was really good. They they were real good. I, like one to seventeen, they they yeah. played Cronulla quite easy. Or one to sixteen, I suppose. Yeah. Quite quite easily. I they out coached us. Oh, massively. Yeah. Appy Coruscant. I know we don't do ratings here, but that's a ten out of ten performance. And the bloke had gastro. Literally shit on the sharks. Yeah, he he was insane. I. That's a good line. Come on. It was. It was. It was absolutely perfect. Um, I was having a discussion with someone where I said that Harry Grant was the best number nine in the competition. I think it's Happy Corusau. I don't think it's he close. is undisputedly the best for the Blues. Yeah. Although Rich Robson had a good weekend too, but he he's a he's number two. Another gastro joke. Yeah. How good is that? But mate, good on the Tigers. You Unfortunately, it came. Fire tonight. Thank you. Unfortunately, it came at our expense. Good on the Tigers. Yeah. Speaking of the Tigers, though, mate, mm -hmm. they had, as you referenced earlier, the yeah. 14th man. That Leichhardt Oval crowd, they're a different beast. And I would say that the Bulldogs, although they played some pretty ordinary opposition in the Titans, more on that later, mm. they had a 14th and 15th man at Belmore. I want to see more games played here for both these teams. Suburban grounds. I do. My, my only concern with like Leichhardt is that it has literally had no money pumped into it. And it's, you know, it, it, it's great. It's a relic, right? It's great to have a game or two Romantic. there every year, as long as you can just fix up some of the facilities that you get there. What I thought was great at Belmore was the council workers <laughs> working on the, the trains, and they just stopped and watched yeah. the game. Like eighty dollars an hour, and they would they had the best seats in the house. Yeah, good on them. You got to take it where you can. I love it. Like rugby league is not like the AFL or the rugby union, where you will just get forty, fifty thousand diehards go, or even like soccer. Not so much in this country. 
But it, it's a working class game, right? And the minute you try to take these you know, games away from the suburban... Like even Penrith, for example. Like mm. Penrith's still got a hill. Yeah. Penrith's still got the beer hill and still got the family hill, right? And these are the things that make rugby league just what it is. Like, if you're going to ask me, am I going to want to go and watch a game at Penrith? Am I going to go and watch a game at Combank? Look, Combank is a beautiful stadium, mm. but give me a hill. Yeah, I agree. The romance of yeah. it's enough. And you, you take those 15,000s to Acor Stadium. Yeah. We're not talking about the crowd. Yeah. We're talking about a boring atmosphere instead of a Coliseum, which like, we've got at both like, games. Like round two against the Bulldogs. You can be 13,000 people at Shark Park. Last year, you and I went to the Sharks Bulldogs game at, at uh, cool. ANZ, where there was eight thousand people there. It was a dreadful atmosphere. It was bad. We were sitting because it was a bit rainy yeah. too. Everyone was sitting closer than they had to be because yeah. you could literally have one hundred and fifty seats between every person and still have ten thousand seats spare. It was disgraceful, yeah. and the game was pretty terrible. That game, mm -hmm. if that's not at Belmore, we're talking about it as a stinker because the Titans are so bad. I look at it and think, God, that was enjoyable. Like. I honestly, I, I, I am envious of a rival podcast to us that the, the two fellas went to Belmore and then they made their way to Leichhardt. I think that's a, that's a great That's number. incredible. Good. I, I'm, I'm all for suburban grounds and I have to say yeah. that looking at the, the Combank sellout crowd for that, the game of the round, undisputedly, it wasn't even close, between the uh, Seagulls and the Eels was incredible. But you don't get that every yeah. week. You play the Titans or you play Cronulla, which, let's be honest, they don't draw big crowds. These games have to go to the suburban grounds. I love both. Mm -hmm. Results aside. Now, Dan, your Gold Coast Titans. Gorn. Gornskis, unfortunately, they're about ten on via Top Sport to finish last. Yeah. They had a horror performance. Mm -hmm. They scored, what, four points? They've scored one try. One try against... And they've played the Dragons and the Bulldogs. You'd want to be 2-0 and with the greatest 60. respect. 60. And they've lost Tino, who yep. is their undisputed best player. ACL. Now, here's the other thing that reared its ugly head this week, is that David Fafita has an option up until round 11. Yes. He can opt out. Now, reading into this again and reading, going on to Gold Coast Titans forums, what it actually says, if he walks into the Titans and says, I want to activate my decision to be able to test the market, he can walk in at any time and say, no, keep my contract. So he can go and test the market, and the, he can tell them he's going to test the market, and then he can stay. And then, oh my if, God, if you're David, who signed off on that? If you're David Fafita, you're doing it. Oh, yeah, undisputedly. And you would, you'd be like, are you a fool if he didn't? Yeah. He's going to walk into a team that could be 0-11 yeah. or 0-10. Now, he does return possibly this week, and I hope so for super coach reasons. But this is a bloke who's a very, very good player. But we said last year when he and Tino re-signed on massive contracts. Silly. They got $3 million wrapped up into two forwards. One who's activated these clauses two years in a row. And this will be number three, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. Tino, fantastic player. I do horrible things to have him at the Sharks. Mm -hmm. But you can't put $3 million in two forwards. And now one's out for the entire season. That sucks. Yeah, it, it sucks. And then you have to think like... Fafita's coming back off an injury, hasn't really got through a whole season. Both Fermor's coming back off an injury. Same deal. They don't really have a lot of good go forward. They're, you know, I know in the, in the preseason we said the Dragons, I think. I think we got it wrong. I, I think, think it's yeah. the Titans. And I put it down to the fact that Tanner Boyd's their halfback, which for me is worse than having an ACL injury. Yeah. And again, we were talking about. It was bad. We were talking uh, before the show about how the game gets you by. Des Hazler looks devoid of answers. Oh, Hazler has no idea. And they kept looking at him and going, oh, Hazler's looking, you know, he's animated. And he's sitting there like this thinking, why the hell did I do this? Yeah. And well, I don't want to bag Titans because I do have a soft spot for him. But if AJ Brimson left tomorrow, I'd be like, ah, screw him, kick him out of the comp. Now, Jaden Campbell made his return to Queensland Cup, but I still don't think that makes any difference. They've got to, they've got to move Brimson from centre. He has to play in the 5 eight. Yeah, he has to. Foreign has to play seven, and Tanner Boy needs to find a trade. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And the thing is, people go, oh, that's harsh. You know, he tries hard. Good. I can try hard to be a super model, but I don't have the equipment to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Tanner Boy just has to realise, he just ain't it. And if Des Hasler can't make the, the hard call, I think they need to sack him bring someone else who does. I've never seen a coach under such pressure after two games. Now, we talked about Tino, the injury. The big one. Reese Walsh. The incident, the headshot, the head clash. Uh, for the record, let me say this right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was a penalty. I agree. I don't think it was a reportable offence. 
and I'm glad Talon May didn't get suspended. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think it would have been absolute tragedy if he'd been suspended, much like when Dalfin Ukin was suspended as yep. well. And I think Ivan Cleary made a really, really good point in the press conference mm-hmm. when he said the referee told Talon May that he didn't bend his body. If Talon May bends his body, Reese Walsh has a broken jaw because yeah. it's a straight shoulder to the face. Yeah. I agree with all yeah. of that. I think it was a complete and total accident. Mm-hmm. Now, he shot out of the line to put a hit on. Uh, yeah, and he put a hit on. And the collision happened. Now, the reason, just play devil's advocate, I know it's your favorite thing to do. He didn't try and make a tackle. He didn't wrap the arms. He just ran into him and, mm. collect, and hit. So I get why they penalized him. I don't agree with it because mm. any bloke who's willing to go and have a head clash, and let's face it, you can die from this. Yep. Uh, that's I'm not making fun. Yeah. You can die from a head clash. If anyone's willing to do that to knock a player of Reese Walsh's ability out, they're not. No, it's just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Complete and total accident. I only overkill. Don't, I get all this duty of care stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go in and, and again, people fall into shoulders and stuff. And you, you shoulder and you got to wrap arms. Accidents happen in rugby league. This was an accident. The duty of care. It's out the window. It's a pure accident. Yeah, and so the the thing that really annoyed me from that situation was that Reese Walsh had to go off for a head injury assessment, but Talamay didn't. Yeah, completely they've call, fair. They've yep. called it a head clash. Completely fair. And he had to go. Reese Walsh had to go and, and do the, which he passed. Yep. I didn't like the fact that the Broncos were trying to send him back on when his eye was closed, yeah, right? Was, was a but error the, on his charge, yeah. yeah, the the issue, the biggest issue that I have from this is that straight away the Broncos trainer said it's a head injury assessment. How is Talon May not spent 15 minutes? The, the HIA thing, or yeah. don't get me started, or go on I. Oh, because there's another one that I took real offence to during the yeah, round. Just real quick, all the best to Reese Walsh. Yeah. Horrible. Four and to Bronco, six weeks. The Broncos are in big trouble. The fact that they were going to send him out there and he said, I can't see the ball, is really worrying. Mm-hmm. But uh, what was the other What was the other incident? Oh, we can talk about that a little bit later because there's a whole segment going to be dedicated to okay, this. Completely fair. Walsh, wishing you all the best. Mm-hmm. Total accident. Now, this is something I have a fence for, right? The drop zone rule. I'm going to give you two examples of, in the first three rounds that have just like pissed me off about this new rule. So this week we had drop zone. Last week we had the obstructor. Yeah. Please go on. So round one, Braden Trindle puts a bomber. Will Kennedy runs through, jumps in the air, touches the ball. Now he knocked it on, mm-hmm. right? He knocked it on, but the referee blows a penalty and says, you didn't make a legitimate attempt to catch the ball. Mm-hmm. Will Kennedy touch the ball first? Yep. Penalty under the new rules. Yep. On Saturday night, now Cronulla are down 18-6, and I'm not saying this co- cost us the game. A bomb's put up at Ronaldo Militalo. Dream Buller runs through, throws his hands in the air, makes no attempt to catch the ball, but is ruled to be in the drop zone. Mm-hmm. Who was more in the drop zone? Will Kennedy in round one or Dream Buller in round three? Well, the bloke who touched the ball is The bloke in the drop who touched zone. the ball right now. Uh, first knock on Ronaldo Mulatalo. If that's how you're going to rule it, but how did we come to the conclusion in round one that a bloke that actually touched the ball after he jumped in and never took his eyes off the ball? Buller didn't take his eyes off the ball. No. Buller no. just threw his hands yeah, out. Yeah, he, he both attempted the ball. I also have a problem with the fact that I think it was Friday night, a ball went up and someone went to jump. And they ruled that he left early yeah, to catch the ball. And he would have caught it if he wasn't bumped. And they said, no, you've got the right to run him off because he left early. So we've got drop zone. Yeah. We've got this leaving early. And we've got obstructor. Yeah. What are they going to add next week? Well, but in, in the same context of this, in round, in round two, Manly versus the Roosters, they deemed that Tom Turbo got there first when James yeah. Zeska jumped yep. over his back. Can you not argue that Will Kennedy got there first? He literally touched the ball first. He literally touched the ball first. They have to do something about this. That, now, this rule sucks. Leo Thompson was charged. Yeah, that earlier. one. That I said. I, I made a tweet about that, saying that it was the worst thing and the most unfortunate thing. Yeah. Because Leo Thompson didn't take his eyes off the ball. No, he just got outlet by far. Yeah. More athletic player in Ryan Pappenhausen. But, but did Leo Thompson not get in the drop zone? No, he was he well he was in the drop zone because the ball fell on him almost on his head, literally. Yeah. But he made no attempt because he, he misread it. Let's be let's face and you got Ryan Pappenhausen but, jumping up. Pappenhausen's going ass over tip. Thank God he yeah. landed on his shoulder, not the back of his neck. Yeah. Complete and total accident. But we've seen three almost the exact same things with three different rulings. Mm. What is it? This is the, the if they had turned around and said that Leo Thompson was in the drop zone, how are you going to 
Because he was. He was. The, I hate this. They this have is, to. This is one of the worst rules that they have, and I hope this clip here gets blasted everywhere for the NRL to see. Because this is shit. Three weeks in, and we're already. Yeah. It's gonna. It's gonna make a big. Difference. And, and I'm. I'm not sitting here saying because because the Tigers weren't given the try because there was a double knock mm. on, right? And in no way am I saying that this was a turning point that cost Cronulla the game. What I'm saying is this is the same rule that we have seen in two games with the Sharks, which is why I'm able to say it. One was a penalty against us, and one was a knock on, and they were the same scenario. Dream Buller jumped in, threw his hands in. Will Kennedy jumped in. Threw his hands in and got the goddamn ball. It's awful. Now, just quickly, Terry, a couple of breaking news segments mm-hmm. a little bit earlier. Uh, looks like the Panthers are going to Vegas. They're, well, they're, they're odds on to go I to love Vegas. This. Uh, there was a few other teams. I remember the Dolphins because I remember thinking, oh, that's a bit strange. They're all just speculation, but the Panthers are going to go. It's going to be home game because obviously their stadium's out of uh, action next year, mm-hmm. so that's sort of why they've done it. Yep. Good move, Sam Penrith. I, I again, I think that they missed the trick the first time going to Vegas by not having teams that have identical names to NFL teams. Because you were, you can't tell me like the Carolina Panthers, who have never won anything in the NFL, wouldn't have got behind the Penrith Panthers. Of course they would. They could have turned out today. We're three-time champions. Yeah, you're guilty. How like the Broncos. I get the Broncos. Mm. You could have had the Titans. Although, thank God, we didn't send yeah, them over. Did not say what, what else? Cowboys. The, the Cowboys. The Eagles. Like, yeah. Like, I love it. I love. It. And and I think if any team does deserve for how dominant they've been to start this decade, it's Penrith. It's Penrith. Now, now leave them there. Yeah, that was all right. <laughs> Got me in. And uh, look, it's good news. The NRLW is going to expand in 2025. Uh, the Bulldogs have been confirmed as a team being selected. And the other team is rumoured to be between South and the Warriors. The Warriors, of course, left the comp mm-hmm. when it was expanded because of COVID. They couldn't get the players back, etc. Fully understandable. I would like to see them come back who, in. Who was the other team? The Bulldogs. Bulldogs. And then who was it between the Warriors and... The Warriors and South. Because South have been close two or three yeah. times now. Now, I know the Panthers were no, looking at be, a team. I think it would be two Sydney... They have It has to be the Warriors. Let's it has to be the Warriors. Yeah. And I love the Bulldogs. They've made a real effort outside. Yeah. Uh, there's talk, just rumours at this stage, that the... Premiership yeah. will be extended, yep. and they'll take a game to Vegas as well. We said it. I'm pretty Thank sure we said it. Thank you very we, much. We did say it. Terry. Do you have to talk to me, Dan? I do. It's time to talk some black, white, and blue. Uh, and the, boy, do I'm, I have the blues. I got the blues, <laughs> yeah. How bad was the loss to the Tigers? Because I'm seeing people come out and say, eh, it happens. It's the loss you had to have. Doesn't matter. We're two and one. That's poppycock. Look, I I will cop the loss, right? Because it happens. Like uh, we've already discussed it, the 14th man, they were just bang up for it. I don't like the manner that it happened. They just gave up. That's what that's what I, this is like the the first two rounds in terms of defense, it's been like so staunch. We said on our podcast after the game, make sure you listen to it, that when we played the Warriors and when we played the Dogs after the 15th minute when they were attacking on our line, we didn't feel like we were going to get broken. Every time the Tigers were down on our end, I thought, gee, we're going to score. They're, they're going to score here, right? Um, we hadn't conceded a point outside the 15th minute. The Tigers made an absolute mockery of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they were the far better team. So much. 1-17, to 17, even though we only had 16 players, they out-coached us, everything they out-enthused us. Their fans were bang up for it. And I I even said it again on our Tuesday preview podcast that, you know, your attitude was on, on the show. It was, ah, it's the Tigers. It's mm. the t-. That was the attitude of all of our fans this week. Oh, it's only the Tigers. Yeah. It's only the Tigers. You could tell that our players thought, these guys have won seven games in three years. It's, it's only the Tigers. It's okay for us to say it. Yeah. But it's not okay to play like it. Mm-hmm. Going back to what you said earlier, 100% agree. You, you take a loss. Yeah. You think, you're going to lose games you should win. We banked two points against the Warriors that we hadn't accounted for. A, but we're doing the same mistakes again yeah. for the same players in the same ways. This is why I'm calling for changes because we have these games in us. We go to the Tigers, they got on top, we fell apart. We were, we were, we were toilet paper, they were a water gun. Mm-hmm. And that's another gastro joke, that's three. We were so bad, and mm-hmm. we never wrestled momentum back against a side that we should have put 60 on. Let's be to the chip. Mm-hmm. One to 17, they had one better player than us, who was by far man of the match. Yeah. Oh, my word, was he good. And there's a couple of forwards that are interchangeable. But in the main, we're a far better team. 
If you show that to someone who's never watched rugby league, they're saying, well, geez, the, Ti the Tigers have made finals yeah. 10 times, and that other team of the rabble, and we would totally cop that. We lost momentum early, and Craig Fitzgibbon came out and said we started well and gave away penalties and errors. <laughs> Wrong. McInnes said we embarrassed the jersey. That I do. Yeah, that We lost agree. momentum, and then we, we just lost. We, could, we couldn't. And, and you saw against the Warriors and the Dogs, when we lost momentum, Tom Hazleton and Jack Williams come onto the field. Jack Williams started and looked... You remember a couple of weeks ago, I was having a go at Demetrio for moving their best middle forward mm -hmm. out wide in Cam Murray. Mm -hmm. What they so you you make the I love they rob Peter to feed Paul. Paul, yeah. Now not only did they rob Peter, they beat him up. Yep. And Paul's still starving because they didn't feed anything. No. They took away our best middle forward of the past two weeks and the bloke who's changed momentum to put him outside where he did what three fifths of nothing. And I'm not blaming him. Bad coach. No, the, it's not only our best middle forward for the last two weeks. It's our best middle forward for the last year. Jack Williams has been the exact punch that we've needed off the bench. You go and have a look at it. He's the only one every week who's consistently getting 100 metres, breaking tackles, not missing any tackles, and he's put the errors away, which is really, really good, right? But out there on the edge, we gave him the Britain Nakora treatment. He had seven runs. Yeah, not good. Like, Jack Williams is... So far this year, the first two games, Jack Williams is averaging 13 runs and 113 metres per game. That's what you need of, of Jack. And that's what, that's what wrestles the game back. Now, Tom Hazelton had to come on early... And this is what I was going to say in the opening segment. Toby Rudolph got hit in the head. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, and again, I'm not saying that it's refereeing that cost us the thing. But Toby Rudolph got hit in the head, stayed down, looked a little bit dazed. We kick the ball. They get it back. Second tackle, Toby Rudolph was told that he's got to go for a HIA. How the hell was that not a penalty? you got to decide what's high tackle on yeah. it. Now, Tom Hazleton comes onto the field. Toby passed his HIA because it was a bit of a love tap. Mm -hmm. Comes back off. Dal Finucane comes on, has a bit of a head clash. Cam McInnes has been sat down for three minutes. That's when you put Billy Burns on. Yes. That is when you put Billy Burns on. You put Billy Burns on and you send Jack Williams into the middle to try and get some aggression back out mm -hmm. there. Because I know Jack had started the game, but he had done nothing. He yeah. could have just gone in there and slotted into the middle. And then Dale passed his HIA. Guess what? He goes back on. Jack Williams goes back to the edge. Or Jack Williams comes off. Yeah. They. This was a horrible coaching. Yeah. Fitz, Fitzgibbon got out coached. Oh, he. This was a zero. By John Morris. Yeah. That's well. Yeah. That was another diary yeah, joke. There you go. Four gastro jokes. That. This is a naught out of ten yeah. performance for Fitzgibbon. Naming Billy Burns wasn't a problem because we thought him and Williams are going to swap. Yeah. Because of course they're going to swap and they didn't. Yeah. Which means he hurt us twice. Now, I made a joke, and this was a joke, so I'm not blaming Billy Burns for any of this. No, no, no. Saying that this is the bloke that we blew up the middle rotation for, for a bloke that played 30 minutes or 21 minutes or something, made 30 mm. metres and had three missed tackles. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds like a shot, and to a point it is, he didn't play well. But you could have brought Andrew Johns on. The game was done. Mm -hmm. He, it was so easy. You put him in the position we signed him to play, you get Williams the best position, he doesn't play. I suggest that we move Talakai and put Eero in, and everyone ran at me. You don't do this, you don't do that. We did worse. We took a player who was, you know, our, our linchpin the last two weeks, mm -hmm. the literal momentum turners, and we put him out left. And then we thought, okay, well, if you're going to play him there, he'll play 80 minutes, so you've got to put Turks on. We picked Billy Burns because we knew he would play there at some stage. He completely got this wrong. Yeah. Completely. And anyone who, who's in there going, oh, but this, but that, but nothing. The injuries don't matter. We absolutely murked ourselves out of a victory yeah. here. And if we name the same team this week against Campbell, we won't. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Why would you go? Why would you go watch this crap? That's why I want changes. Now, I know people are going to run and say, with this player, this player, completely fair. Come at me. We can't name that same team because no. it hasn't been good enough two years and it's certainly not good enough now. No, and look, I, again, it's the, the whole robbing Peter to feed Paul because of what we get from Talakai on his, his kick, you know, the, the first and second hit ups after a kick, right? But I may be thinking now that with all the injuries that we have, that Talakai can still go and play there and he can still get back to take those tough hit-ups for us. And maybe Kayla has to go in there. Now, I briefly watched a little bit of the Jets game where I could where I could get a stream that I didn't pay for. I don't think Kayla Lero again stood up today. No, he didn't. He they, didn't. Don't, they don't play a game that, that does that. No, he, did, he, did, he didn't stand up for it. Now, anyone who turns around and says he's a two-time player of the year, no, he's not. He's a one-time player of yeah, the year. Yeah, two-time team of the year. Two-time team of the year. Three-time team of the year. Yeah, yeah. One-time one time player of the year. But he's not... I don't think he's demanding. I think, I think we want him to be there because he's just the next shiny toy that we have. But I don't... Like, if anything, the person who deserves the call-up now is Sam Stone Street. 
Yeah, he was very good for the Jets. Yeah, yeah we'll, he's, uh, he's scoring tries. We'll, we'll talk about the Jets now, then we'll do what will we yep. change. So mm-hmm. anyone that didn't watch the game, uh, the Jets beat the Magpies with a late Puru field goal mm-hmm. after playing like total and utter... Puru yes. was bad for 79 minutes and 50 seconds, but it's the final it's, 10 seconds that count. It's the Chad Townsend syndrome. He plays yeah. like absolute crap mm-hmm. and then kicks field goal and everyone goes, Chad the hero. Now, in terms of the game, mm-hmm. Stone Street was great. Hero was good. He started the game with two hit-ups and made 40 metres, and I think mm-hmm. he finished on about 70 metres. Mm-hmm. So that says to me, you've got to get more involved. If you can do it, why not do it more? Uh, young Viola had an up-and-down game, but looked good. Liam Easton was our best. Yeah, he Liam Easton's a stud. Incredible. Keep an eye on that. Kay Dykes missed the game through injury, I believe, mm-hmm. and Big Tooks was pulled late because he's going to play next Because of the injuries that we have, yeah. yeah. So that's going to happen. Uh, Jaden Beryl set up the match winner. Yeah. Sam Healy, superstar, our best forward. Brad Fernley. Brad Fernley. He was head and shoulders above everyone else on the now, field. Now, he's on a dev deal with us, so, you know. Could we go to the NRL and We say, could go to the NRL and go, we've literally got no forwards. I would do it this he, week. He's all right. He, now, he looks pretty good. People want more. Max Bradbury, and I think he's on a top 30 contract, yeah. so obviously he's the next man up. Brad Fernley is a long way yeah. in front of him. He's a lot bigger, and his hair's a lot redder. Yeah. So I think all the ingredients are there. He was fantastic. Yeah, he's he's a big angry man for sure. We've got two props in the flag as well. Now, flag were beaten 38 points to 18 by the Tigers, so at least we got one, mm. the one that counts. In, yeah, in the Jets. There. That's all we the care Jets. about. That's all we care show. about. This is a show about the Jets. Uh, Celicia Tata, Felix Fatali, they are two... Big prospects that we have Just down too young. there as well. Yeah, they are way too young. Brad Fernley looked really, really good. Liam Eason, like all the raps about him are his work rate and his support play. And today you saw that he had like 25 runs and he supported Beryl up the middle. Changes that we'll make for the Sharks this on, week. So on, who are you hearing around? Hunt's out. Yep. Tobias Tough. Rudolph is out. And I, th- I hope we rest Alpha Nukin. They must. Two head clashes. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's got to be... So we're down two middle props. Yeah. So Thomas Hazelton must start. Tom Hazelton and Kafusi starting. There's your easy. Cam McInnes still at lock. T. Wilton obviously on the left. T. Wilton on the left. Or is he? Yep. T. Wilton's on the left. See? No, I'm saying or, or should he be? He, yeah. T. Yeah. Wilton left. Talakai right. But yeah. Now that's where I'm going with this. If this isn't the week where Talakai plays at right back row, then mm. God help us, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So, or so, left back row move T because, and people say he's trained at one side. If you're a professional footballer, you can't play both yeah. sides of the field. You're in the wrong sport. Yeah. I wouldn't or move T. Matt or you Matt Burton. I wouldn't move T. Wilton because no. I think he's been fantastic and I think he was one of our best three the other night. I Talakai think we need has, that threat of yeah, Talakai. We need the line run. Talakai has trained at right back yep. row. I dropped photos in during mm. the week. It's happened. It's mm. legit. Yep. If he doesn't start there this week and we play Billy Burns there or Jack Williams. Yeah. What's the point of turn up this week? Because the bench will be. Yeah, well, so Eero, Eero moves in. I, you know, obviously you've got to keep everyone else as it is. That settles that. On the bench, you're going to have huge Tooks. Huge Tooks. Jack Williams back in his rightful position. Yep. Billy Burns. Yep. And then there's a shootout. Yes. Because there's nothing left. No, we're out of players. We've got, got no Colhoun, no Uheli. You've got Dan Atkinson? Yeah, no. No. Niwe Prudu? No, definitely not. Don't you even put that in. Dykes? If he wasn't half dead, yes. Potentially. But no, you can't pick Dykes. He hasn't played any football. Or Jaden Beryl as a running forward. I'm picking Beryl. I'm picking Beryl. Because Beryl. he was very good for the Jets. And uh, you I'm, need, giving, I'm giving Beryl his You need debut. a player who... You can't tell me he or Braley can't defend at lock no. for 10 minutes. Because that fourth player and only I'm, ever gets 10 minutes. And I'm putting Max Bradbury as the 18th man. And if anyone's having an absolute stinker and they get a slight touch... Stay down. Stay down, get a penalty. Stay, and down, get stay down, and we're putting Max on there. Yeah, I, th- I think that that's literally what we have to do. If we start the game with Billy Burns or Jack Williams, I'm telling you, Canberra are going to tonk us. They're going to tonk us, and if Kaleo doesn't play this weekend, he will never play. Release him. It's just done, because yeah. we're out of options. Make it happen. Now, we'll do a full preview on Fins Up. Make sure you check it. We're also going to appear on an enemy podcast this week. We are. Which one? Yeah. Uh, Blake and the Pork. That's the one, yeah. Thank you for saving me. We'll edit that and make that look sweet. Dan. Talk to me, Terry. It's time for some top sport tips. Yes, it certainly is. The boss. Sometimes you just have to send a message, mate. The king is back. Now, you've taken the lead. You've taken the lead because you got your money ball right. I did. Yes. I tipped against the Sharks. You tipped against the Sharks. Now, you got seven out of eight, yep. and I got four, but because you got your money ball, you take that extra point. 
So you only have to give a dollar this week. Yeah, good. And I have to give. Sorry, children. I have to give four dollars, which yep. puts us both even. Good. Eleven dollars. Fantastic. So congratulations on Let's that. Let's do it. Uh, of course, top sport great mates of ours are going to match the yeah. combined total. Everything uh, that we do. Sorry, I couldn't help you this week, but I'm just too good at tipping. We are now uh, because you went first last week and you got the better round. Yep. I'm going to go first this week. Completely fair. Thursday night footy. Mm -hmm. The Roosters are up against the Panthers. This is the game of the round. This, this is, is this is the game of the year so far. Delicious. Do we really need a Thursday night game this week? Yes. Okay, absolutely. Sure we well, do. it's this one. Let's have it every week. Yeah, this, we absolutely need it because... Uh, Chookie's on fire. Yeah, Chook, Chooks looks good. It was. A, this is a bad South Sydney team that they beat. It is, but Penrith, they... Penrith were brilliant they until they... They didn't just beat them. Penrith were brilliant until they decided that they had toyed with their prey enough mm. and then just went, ah, oh, you know... Let's just take Cleary off, Rob Dan of 80 super coach points. It's yeah, all sweet. Whatever. For that reason, I'm tipping. No, I'm tipping Penrith. This is going to be. Oh, you to pick first. Yeah, but I don't care who you pick. I'm tipping Penrith all the same. Please go on. Who are you going to pick, Terry? Penrith. I don't know. Well, you better. Sam Walker, they, they appealed Sam Walker's uh, category one mm -hmm. and successfully appealed it. Yep. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> If an independent doctor says it's a category one, you can't just turn and go, sorry, I was drunk on the night. Yeah. It's now a cat too. But mum. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I think I think the Roosters have like, they fired up, but I just don't know if they're going to have enough to match mm. what Penrith have and because of that, I will tip Penrith. I'll tip Penrith. Now, I'll tell you what, they're in trouble if Penrith release a shirt that calls out their honour this week because mm. South Sydney did that, always in our shadow. And boy, did they get out of that shadow. <laughs> Yeah, if that's if that's the shadow, they should try it sometimes. Um, now this is going to be an absolute bludger of an Easter Friday. Normally, this South Bulldogs game is delicious. This is going to be it's atrocious. Bitey. It's going to be absolutely atrocious. The Bull I mean, the fair credit to the Bulldogs, but they only beat the Titans and South Sydney come with this in the back of zero and three. I mean, if they're zero and four, the the talks are going to get louder and louder and louder for Jason Demetrio to leave. I, I, there has to be a bounce back somewhere from South Sydney. Will it be? Oh yeah, I'm going to pick him. Yeah, me too. For the oh, fact of course that you are. They just can't be any worse than they were. They're going to get bollocked this week. Last. Yeah, they are, and I, I don't want to go into a rant because I could go on for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But there are problems in that club well beyond a young halfback underperforming. I think they'll win this week, but if they're playing anyone other than the Dogs or the Titans, I'm not tipping them. Mm -hmm. And then Friday night, we get the second game of the Forex Cup. Now, mm. the, the North Queensland Cowboys are leading at the moment. Yep. They're the only, well, them and the Dolphins have played the game, and they absolutely beat the pants off the Dolphins. The yep. Broncos come into this. No Reese Walsh, no Payne Hearts, potentially no Adam Reynolds, and for that, I'm giving them no hope because the Cowboys are firing. They look really good. They haven't been tested yet, yep. and I don't think they're going to be tested this week either. Now, Tristan Saylor is going to be the obvious option to come into this. Um, I am still going to pick the Cowboys to... I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win the Forex Cup. Well, I'll tip Brisbane because we've got to have something different for a little bit of fun. Uh, if Reynolds is back, I think they can win, but Jesus, it's going to be tough. Yeah. I, look, but if I tip first, I would have tipped the Cowboys, but Broncos... Scott, Scott Drinkwater is in sensational form. Reese Robson is oh, in yeah. sensational form. Tom Dearden. Tom Dearden, yeah. Daily M. Smokey. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, look, no, I think it'll be drink water. Broncos, whatever. Yeah, cool. Uh, 5.30, down in Wollongong on Saturday, the Dragons are taking on the Seagulls. Now, the Dragons were, tr were atrocious again. Started well. 18-4 up. Raymond Fartella-Marona should have scored to make it 24-4. If it's 24-4, I think it's a completely different game. Absolutely, it is. That's a uh, huge... But then they were absolutely, absolutely, absolutely dreadful. Manly were valiant in defeat and I think had a perfectly good try taken off of them. I am going to tip Manly. I'm going to tip Manly. That Manly Parramatta game was like this. Yeah. Maybe this game is going to be. That was so much fun, that Manly Parramatta game. The best game of the. I'll, I'll, I'll in, watch it again. In terms of attacking football this week, it's going to be great. Only if you were in the maroon of the Sea Eagles. God damn. We've got another Forex Cup game on Saturday. We have to watch the Titans play. Again. Oh, That's they're our playing the Dolphins. Curse. Ooh, okay, the, okay. The they Dolphins are playing are the Dolphins. Fresh off a bye. Yeah, fresh off a bye. Um, Wayne, Wayne Bennett took our coaching tips. Paid us? Did you? Got yeah, the, I did. I got, got my pay. Got yeah, my we got the pay from Wayne. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, 
I'm going to pick the Dolphins. Yeah, of course you're going to pick the Dolphins. Cause, I am, because the Titans not, are crap. You're not crazy. <laughs> I'm going to let you pick the I, Dolphins as well. Yeah, I'm going to pick the Dolphins. I wish this was a KO, because yeah. this would be a sellout and it'd be fun. This would be a cavernous team, uh, stadium rather, and I guarantee you the Dolphins outnumber the fans. This would be this would be. It great. happens every week at the Titans. We always joke about it. Like when they play the Warriors, there's so many more Kiwis there. When they play the Sharks, there's so many more Sharks there. This would like, be legit. This yeah. would be a Dolphins home game and yeah. all in comfort. It, it, it'll be a carnival there and the Dolphins are going to absolutely blood of them. Now, Warriors versus Newcastle, 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. That game just got a hell of a lot of fun because the Knights had a gutsy win. They did, yeah. The Warriors had a gutsy win. Mm-hmm. Both teams got another level to go. They had some good games last year for yeah. memory too. They did. The Warriors absolutely thumped them 40 to 10 though in the uh, semi-final yeah, week two. Right oh, I think that's going to happen again. I don't know if it'll be a thumping, but I'm going to pick the Warriors to win this one. Yeah, I'll tip the Warriors too. Oh, I think- cool. Well, we've got one. You, you, you shame me into one difference. <laughs> this is going to be a fun game. Yeah. I, I'm hoping Chance is back. Yep. There's a chance he will be probably not. That Warriors team, though, they, they could be 3 and 0 right now. Yeah. Instead, they're they 1 and 2. They should be. Yeah, they probably should. They're a very interesting. They definitely side. should be 2 and 1. Like. It's, it's a lot of fun. That mm. Rocco Berry's really fed me some crow. Yep. Two of us check out his best game in a long, long mm-hmm. time. I yeah they just yeah I tweeted right. out that uh, two of us check brought that union defence with him and then he was probably the second best player on the park after that horrible miss on Matt Timokos yeah that's true but Timokos is going to body some players yeah yeah I'm pretty confident in this one which watch Newcastle win now but yeah. and then uh, no confidence in this game six fifteen Sunday night at the best stadium on the planet at construction zone mm, Shark oh yeah. Park uh, so the Sharks it. are taking on the Raiders oh dear now before we get into this yep. It's my turn to tip against the Sharks. I am tipping the Raiders in the Moneyball game. Okay, well, that means I have to tip the Sharks. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to donate $2. Yeah? We're huge favourites. So if you what, got any money... We've got no forwards. Get on, get on camera We're quick, talking about like... Yeah, I saw they were like $2.60 or $2.70 yeah. or whatever. The top sport are just throwing money away on this they one are. here. We're Tristan, going to name Billy Burns. Tristan, no. No, yeah. no boys. Like, Billy Burns is going to play football. Yeah, this is not going to be fun. I I am terrified of what the Raiders I'm are I'm worried because Canberra got the best forward pack going at the moment. No, there's a few better, but yeah. a very good pack. They play perfect early season football, right? They just tuck it under wing and they run. Yeah. It didn't work this weekend, but... I tell you what, I just, I just said his name out loud, Matt Timoko. Yep. And if he is matched up on Talakai, I think he's going to do naughty things to him. Yeah. Kaleiro may have the foot speed to match him on this. That battle is going to baptism a fire, yeah. but you got to play. If you're going to play rugby league. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, he, look, if he plays Talakai, I may get my agenda via Matt yeah. Timoko, yeah. but I don't want that because I want to win this I game. I am taking the Raiders comfortably. Cronulla for me. Now, Cronulla. Monday, we, Cronulla. we get some Monday. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Meg. These are cool. Great stuff. Uh, Monday afternoon. Oh, God, I love Monday football. About time. I love Monday. I'm so uh, I'm, I'm so disappointed they took Monday night for yeah. you. Yeah. We would have had Thursday to Monday. Yes, yeah, so that would have been nice. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Parramatta against the Tigers. Now, Parramatta with a nice win. Mm-hmm. The Tigers with a brilliant win. Tigers yeah. were probably the standout team yeah. in terms of bounce back, right? Yeah. My biggest concern with the Tigers is sustainability. Mm-hmm. They have that performance in them. I don't think that they have that performance in them every week. Not a like art. And I think that was an emotional win. And you could see it in the sheds afterwards. They had the new team song out. I think there was a lot of emotion involved in that game. And they're going to go to Combank where, let's be honest, it's going to be a sellout, but it's going to be predominantly Parramatta. You know you have to be a member to buy tickets for this, which is the biggest Sweet. cop out of all time. She can buy one game membership. Clever, clever. Very good. Um... Because of that note of what I've just said, I don't think it, that it is sustainable for the Tigers, and I think Parramatta are... They're pretty good. Parramatta win and Parramatta win well. And the I don't think they win is, well. I, no. think, I think you're looking at like a 26-16 game where it's kind of close and the Tigers are in striking distance, but Parramatta's class stands up. That's fair. I think they'll beat them by quite a bit. Any Tigers fan that bought tickets to this game is a Parramatta member. Brilliant. Excellent shit, Housery. Just excellent. So there, were, there was no away bay for this? No, you've got to be a member to go to this game. Someone will prove me wrong, but for the purpose of this, you have to be a member to be at this game, and I love it. Wow. Wow. We need to start doing that. Yeah, we do. I'm pretty sure that's just, right. Just, just <laughs> one game memberships every week at Shark Park. Brilliant. Love it. Parramatta. Parramatta. 
Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by our good friends at Top Sport. Don't forget to like and subscribe everywhere you can. Uh, give us the feedback, give us the like, it helps with the algorithm on there. Please subscribe. I'm yeah. not beyond begging. Yeah. We need some subscribers. Yeah. Um, I'm not eating, I'm on a diet. It's a subscription only diet. Wow. Don't make me starve, people. Make yourself, he needs it. Yeah.